the super acid, fluorosulfuric acid, has the chemical formula HSO3F. In combination with the Lewis acid antimony pentafluoride, it is a constituent of the super acid called magic acid. In fluorosulfuric acid, each fluorine atom contributes seven valence electrons. Each oxygen contributes six valence electrons. Sulfur contributes six valence electrons. And hydrogen contributes one valence electron. Therefore, we have a system with 32 electrons. We can satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and satisfy the octet rule for each of the atoms by connecting all the heavy atoms to the central sulfur atom by single bonds in the case of fluorine and one of the oxygens and by double bonds for the other two oxygens. One thing to note, this is just one possible resonance structure. We can also uh, develop resonance structures where one or both of these two doubly bonded oxygens are singly bound to the central sulfur atom. Therefore, the true structure of fluorosulfuric acid is actually some combination or average of all those contributing resonance structures. We notice that while we satisfy the octet rule for fluorine and the three oxygens, and for sulfur, we notice that sulfur has two, four, six, 8, 10, 12 electrons in this particular resonance structure. So we have an expanded octet, which is allowed because sulfur is in the third row of the periodic table. So therefore, we are allowed to expand the octet if necessary. When fluorosulfuric acid ionizes, it loses a proton, H+, plus, which leaves behind its electron, and we are then left with the fluorosulfate anion. In this particular anion, fluorine contributes seven valence electrons, sulfur contributes six valence electrons, each of the three oxygen atoms contributes six valence electrons, therefore we have a 31 electron system. We recall that it is a minus one anion, Therefore, we must add one additional valence electron, leaving a total of 32 valence electrons. As was the case with the parent fluorosulfuric acid molecule, we can write numerous resonance structures for this anion. We notice in this particular resonance structure, we have single bonds with fluorine and oxygen to the central sulfur atom. And we have two sulfur-oxygen double bonds. In this particular structure, we have satisfied the octet rule for each and every atom in the molecule. And in the course of doing that, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons on the central sulfur atom. We have an expanded octet. We can also develop resonance structures where one or both of these oxygen atoms is bound to the central sulfur atom by a single bond. If this oxygen and this oxygen are both connected to the central sulfur atom by single bonds, we would be left with exactly eight electrons around the central sulfur atom. Therefore, we would have satisfied the octet rule without having expanded the octet. Although we're not going to do it here, we could also develop another structure where we have three sulfur-oxygen triple bonds. That structure would also contribute. The true structure, when we have this phenomenon of resonance, is not any single one of the resonance structures, but an average of all of them contributing. The acid chlorosulfuric acid has the chemical formula H SO3Cl. The hydrogen contributes one valence electron. Each of the oxygen atoms contributes six valence electrons. 
Sulfur contributes six valence electrons, and chlorine contributes seven valence electrons. Amongst all the heavy atoms here, sulfur is the largest and the most electropositive, therefore it is the central atom of this molecule. This is another 32 electron system, and we can satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for all the heavy atoms by connecting oxygen and chlorine to the central sulfur atom by single bonds and two oxygens to sulfur with double bonds. Notice in that this particular resonance structure that sulfur has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons. This is permitted, we're permitted to expand the octet for sulfur because it is in the third row of the periodic table, therefore we can expand the octet. Notice that we could also expand the octet, theoretically at least, for chlorine, but there is no need to do so in this particular molecule. We could also draw or build additional resonance structures for this molecule where one or both of these doubly bound oxygen atoms is singly bound to the central sulfur atom. When chlorosulfuric acid ionizes, it gives up a proton, H+, hydrogen leaving, but leaving behind its electron, so that we're left with SO3Cl with a minus one charge. Chlorine contributes seven valence electrons. Sulfur contributes six valence electrons. Each of the three oxygen atoms contributes six valence electrons. Therefore, we have a 31 electron system if this were neutral. It is an anion with a minus one charge, so we add one additional electron into our system, and we have 32 electrons. In this particular resonance structure, we have two single bonds to the central sulfur atom and two double bonds. In this particular case, we satisfy the octet rule for all the atoms, and sulfur has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons. It has an expanded octet. Notice that in this particular resonance structure, chlorine, though it's capable of expanding its octet in certain cases, does not need to expand its octet. We can also construct numerous resonance structures where we might have three sulfur oxygen triple bonds, two or one or zero double bonds between sulfur and oxygen. Each of those resonance structures will contribute to the overall real structure of the molecule for the chlorosulfate anion. The super acid trifluoromethane sulfonic acid has the chemical formula CF3 SO3H. Each of the fluorine atoms will contribute seven valence electrons. Sulfur contributes six valence electrons. Each of the three oxygen atoms contributes six valence electrons. Carbon contributes four valence electrons. And hydrogen contributes one valence electron. Therefore, we end up with a total of 50 electrons in this particular system. In building the structure, we can envision it as a substituted style of sulfuric acid. So we recognize on the right-hand side of the molecule the structure of sulfuric acid, and then on the left side, where we would have had a hydroxyl group, that's been replaced by a trifluoromethyl group. We are able to satisfy the octet rule for the atoms in the molecule and the duet rule for hydrogen by connecting all the atoms by single bonds except for two double bonds of oxygen to the central sulfur atom. But this is just one of several possible resonance structures. We could also have set up resonance structures where one or both of these oxygen atoms have single bonds to the central sulfur rather than double bonds.
Notice that in this particular case, where we have the two double bond case, that we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons on the central sulfur atom, which is allowed because, as we recall, sulfur is in the third row of the periodic table. Therefore, we can expand the octet for sulfur. When trifluoromethane sulfonic acid, also known as triflic acid, ionizes, hydrogen departs, but leaves behind its electron, so that we're left with the triflate anion, which has 50 electrons. We can satisfy the octet rule for each and every atom by connecting everything by a single bond. We notice in this one particular case, we could just as well have connected these oxygens to the central sulfur atom by single bonds, but in this particular resonance structure, we have shown it with two sulfur oxygen double bonds and one sulfur oxygen single bond. In the process, as we said, we're able to satisfy the octet rule for all the atoms, but in this particular resonance structure, we notice that sulfur has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons. It has an expanded octet, which is allowed because sulfur is in the third row of the periodic table. We could just as well have drawn the other contributing resonance structures, where we have three sulfur oxygen double bonds, two sulfur oxygen double bonds, one sulfur oxygen double bond, or zero sulfur oxygen double bonds. Each and every one of those resonance structures will contribute to the overall real structure, which is a hybrid or an average of all those contributing resonance structures. A superacid, which is called magic acid, is a combination of antimony pentafluoride and fluorosulfuric acid. In the mixture, one of the anions that forms is shown here. Here we have an incredibly complex structure, but we can still build it with a Lewis structure. We notice that in this particular compound, we have six fluorine atoms. Each fluorine is going to contribute seven valence electrons. We have three oxygen atoms, each of which contributes six valence electrons. Sulfur contributes six valence electrons. And antimony contributes five. If we add all these together, we get a total of 71 valence electrons. This is a minus one charged anion. Therefore, we add one more electron to get a total of 72 electrons. So we can recognize the structure of fluorosulfuric acid on the left. So we have two sulfur oxygen double bonds. The other oxygen is bound by a single bond and then it links to the antimony, which is the, the center of the antimony pentafluoride material. In the process, we notice that we can satisfy the octet rule for fluorine and oxygen, as you would expect. We can also satisfy the octet rule for antimony, but we have a total of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons around antimony. We've expanded the octet, which we know we can do because it's in the third row of the periodic table or later. And we also know it because by looking at the card, we see these extra white hole positions. Similarly for sulfur, we see that sulfur has a total of two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons. And we know that sulfur is also able to expand its octet. This is one of several possible resonance structures for the fluorosulfuric acid part of the molecule. But this is a uh, typical because the bond order of sulfur to oxygen here is of the order of a double bond.